there's lots you don't know about this popular fantasy series. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be exploring 10 pieces of trivia you should know about Game of Thrones. Knowledge is power. Please be advised, the following clip contains spoilers and mature content. Ten is too young to see such things. He won't be a boy forever. And winter is coming. Number 10, a long time coming. Kicking off our list is some backstory about George R. R. Martin's epic fantasy novels. The book series debuted in 1996 as A Song of Ice and Fire. However, when it was adapted to television in 2011, the show adopted the title of the first novel. Martin is still writing the best-selling book series, but it is supposed to be seven books long when it is finally completed. Songs and histories from the Seven Kingdoms. Thank you, sir. Number nine, television trumps film. Due to the novel's instant popularity, film studios attempted to secure the rights early on. However, the author dismissed the idea of a movie adaptation as he believed a film would not do his books justice due to their scale and complexity. He favored HBO TV as the network had proven itself capable of faithfully adapting such stories. Number eight, The Seven Kingdoms of Westeros. Viewers can explore a map of Game of Thrones' vast fantasy world in the show's animated intro. Real locales like Northern Ireland, Malta, Croatia, Iceland, and Morocco duplicate the grandeur of the book's settings. However, even with such exotic filming locations and obviously high production values, spots like Winterfell were built in a parking lot and the wall was built on a soundstage. I wanted to be here when you saw it for the first time. Number seven, colorful nicknames. What you looking at, Halfman? A trademark of the show that's been carried over from the books is the use of character nicknames, which often reference a character's physical features, origins, and traits. Examples include the Imp or Halfman to describe Tyrion Lannister, Littlefinger to describe Peter Baelish, the Hound to portray Sandor Clegane, and the Young Wolf for Robb Stark. Many of the nicknames are actually derogatory, like the treasonous Jamie Lannister as the Kingslayer or the masculine Brienne the Beauty. What did the Mad King say when you stabbed him in the back? He said the same thing he'd been saying for hours. Burn them all. Number six, the bastards. And you? What's your story, bastard? Ask me nicely and maybe I'll tell you, dwarf. In the land of Westeros, there are many bastards, several of whom were born to nobles. Those who are acknowledged are given alias surnames that describe the regions from which they come, including Flowers in the Reach, Hill in the Westerlands, Pike in the Iron Islands, Rivers in the Riverlands, Sand in Dorne, Stone in the Vale, Storm in the Stormlands, Waters in the Crownlands, and Snow in the North. Well, Lord Snow, it appears you're the least useless person here. Number five, book to film character changes. As with many adaptations, some things don't make it from book to screen. On paper, Stannis Baratheon, Tywin Lannister, and the master sword fighting instructor, Cyril Farrell, were all bald, but they were allowed to keep their hair for the TV series. Ah. <laughs> Just so. Meanwhile, Davos Seaworth's punishment for years of smuggling was the removal of the fingertips of his left hand. On screen, they swapped left for right since the actor portraying this character was left-handed. You Westerosi are funny people. Man chops off your fingers and you fall in love with him. <laughs> Number four, Cersei's parenting skills. You are my darling boy and the world will be exactly as you want it to be. In the books, Cersei never disciplines her nasty bratty son Joffrey, and this protectionist attitude defined her character, causing her to plot the murder of her husband Robert in response to him striking the little creep. I've done nothing. Quite right, you did nothing. However, in the show, her motives are more focused on attaining power, so on one occasion she does strike her son. How many bastards does he have running? <gasps> This 180-degree change was the result of the overwhelmingly positive viewer reaction to Tyrion disciplining the boy. Mm. One word, and I hit you again. I'm telling mother! Number three, the direwolves. Direwolves are large, mythical beasts described in the book. 
Budget constraints meant real wolves and dogs were used sparingly and were later coated with CGI effects. Remember when the dire wolf named Lady was executed? In real life, she was a northern Inuit dog named Zuni, who was adopted by the actress who played Sansa. Let's hope she takes better care of her pet than her character did. <laughs> Number 2. A budget too small for horses The biggest stumbling block facing Game of Thrones is a lack of money. One result of this is a lack of horses in the fantasy world, which led to several changes from the book. It's why King Robert ran down a wild boar on foot, why Tyrion hiked to the Lannister encampment, and why Season 2's jousting tournament was swapped for combat above a narrow walkway. <laughs> Number 1. Realistic Warfare Rounding out our trivia list is a factoid about war on Game of Thrones. Instead of focusing on pure carnage, the show emphasizes the strategy of warfare. Addressing one of the author's pet peeves, these battles go beyond two armies fighting and delve into the campaign and logistics, including discussions about needing to feed soldiers, the actions of commanders, and the play of geography. We need to get him on broken ground, put his knights at a disadvantage. No, we need to get around him and break Jamie Lannister's siege of Riverrun. Do that, and the River Lords will join us. Viewers should be wary of everyone's mortality, since Martin also dislikes happy endings. <laughs> Which piece of Game of Thrones trivia did you find the most interesting? Please let us know in the comments section, and for more informative and entertaining top tens, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. The things I do for love.